Hello, welcome back to Book Nerd TV. Brian at Bookish tagged me in a recluse book tag and I thought I would go ahead and complete the tag. I haven't done a lot of tags on my channel so I thought this was a really wonderful opportunity for me to participate. So, and I'm looking at my phone <laughs> to remember the question so bear with me. First question or first prompt is, what would you look for in the Ultimate Bookstore in under an hour? If I only had an hour, clearly this is the first visit that I just ran across a bookstore and I was on my way to somewhere else and didn't realize that this was the Ultimate Bookstore. Um, in that hour, I would map out what sections were where in the bookstore and would probably start if they had an out of print section, I would go there and peruse and look for whether it's fiction or nonfiction, I'd, I'd look in that area first just because out of print or very old books, I think I'd wanna look at those first because the other books are usually going to be available. If this was like a used bookstore, an ultimate used bookstore, again, I would just have to, I have to conduct reconnaissance <laughs> So I know what was where and when so that I would I could map out or start to plan my return visit because really that's what I would do you know no matter the type of ultimate bookstore used or regular retail used or new I would definitely browse it make sure I know what sections are where where my nonfiction memoir biography autobiography section is where my science and medical sections are. Just kind of get to know the lay of the land, the map of the bookstore, so that when I made my return, I could more effectively use my time, an hour or what have you, to, to find the books that I want to purchase. But of course, if it's the ultimate bookstore, the hour time limit is completely unreasonable because I would want to spend all day, every day, in the bookstore. I mean, maybe not every day, but a lot of days. And I would revisit often and probably hang out there a lot and probably try to get a job there. Prompt number two is who is your favorite reclusive character? I don't know that I have a favorite reclusive character, although I know that this character struck me as being a very reclusive, isolated person. And that is Coil from The Shipping News. So for me, he felt like a very isolated, disconnected person, um, even though he had a family or parts of a family, pieces of family, as it were. Um, I feel like that's the person that maybe comes to mind for me, you know, at the very front of mind. I'm sure there's somebody else I'm forgetting that it should be obvious, but that's not their, their name didn't pop up. This prompt has a second part as well. And it says, uh, talk about a novel with an isolated location or a claustrophobic location. I don't really have a claustrophobic for me location. So the isolated location for me would again be in the shipping news, the isolated coast of Newfoundland that Coyle and his family go to after this tragedy in their family that for me the writing by Annie Pro gave me such a feeling of isolation and separation that that still rings that still resonates for me to this day probably doesn't hurt that it was also cold and desolate and that probably helped in the atmosphere as well prompt number three is with a week off with no obligations what books would you read two books that I would definitely tell myself I would want to read with a week off with no obligations and nothing to do are Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl by Harriet Jacobs. I bought this book a while ago and I said I'm going to read this book. This is one of the books that I should read. Uh, one of the classics that I should read. Haven't read it yet but there you go. The second book in my week off no obligation is a Collected works of Zora Neale Hurston, A Life in Letters. And Zora Neale Hurston, as I think happens every 10, 15 years, there's this sort of renaissance or remembrance of her contributions, her creativity, and her brilliance. 
that just kind of surges. It just kind of, it ebbs and then it flows. It ebbs and then it flows. I feel like we're in one of those peak periods. I think, what is it? Hitting a short lick with a crooked stick, I think is the name of the collection of short stories that was published either the end of 2019 or at the beginning of this year, 2020. So I think I would want to have this book as one of the books that I read. <laughs> the fourth prompt is what books would you actually read during this week off with no obligations and nothing to do? One of the books that I would very likely read, if not this particular book, would be a Beverly Jenkins historical novel. I am actually currently rereading uh, this book, Night Song. I read it years ago. It's one of the first books that I read by her. And I thought, since it had been so long since I'd read it, that I'd go back and give it a reread. And I started this right before the Book 2 Prize reading started. So I am maybe a third of the way through this book again. Had to put it down because Book 2 has just taken over. The next book that I would very probably read would be An Extraordinary Union by Alyssa Cole. And I realize these are both historical romances. Maybe that's a thing though. Maybe that's, maybe there's something about that, but I would uh, probably read for sure. I'm not saying that I wouldn't read the other books, but I would for sure throw this uh, in with my reading. And so one of the things that I want to say that I'm going to use the natural spotlight of the sun to show off this gorgeous cover. This cover is gorgeous. I love it. I would clearly have bought the book just because of the cover alone. I'm, I'm one of those people who love beautiful covers and this is just, I think this cover is gorgeous. And from what I understand, Extraordinary Unit is a very good historical romance. So I can't wait. Week off or not, I am going to get to this book and I am going to read this book. Again, Brian from Bookish is the one who tagged me. Thank you so much, Brian. I appreciate you. I love, I love Brian's channel and I'll make sure that I put his name in his channel here. The originator of this tag is, oh my gosh, and I'm forgetting his first name, but it's Mayberry Book Club or The Mayberry Book Club. And I'll make sure to include his name along with his channel somewhere in the video as well. And what you'll find as well on the Mayberry Book Club channel, run by the young man whose name I can't remember, is in addition to a great booktube channel, you'll also find a tour of his tiny home. I loved it. I just loved it. A great feature of his tiny home is the fact that he has this really great bookshelf. So there are plenty of books in his tiny home. And I love the fact that even though he's in a tiny home, he values books enough to make sure that there is space in the tiny home for the books. I just, I thought it was great. And if you're interested in tiny homes or a really good booktube channel, check out the Mayberry Book Club. Again, thank you so much, Brian, for tagging me in this book tag. I hope you all have a really great day. And in this time of social isolation and all the other issues and things going on, remember to reach out to your friends, your neighbors, your family, just reach out to people, be kind to people, be patient, be safe, do all of those things to keep yourself and your family and your friends and your neighborhood and your city safe.